Hey viewers, today I'm going to show you how to disassemble, clean loop, and reassemble a Manitou Magnum fork. This is uh, from the 2000 model year, I believe, and it's a plain Magnum, not a Magnum R. They are different. The Magnum R has uh, oil in them, and these do not. So be aware, if you have a different version of the Magnetto fork, uh, find instructions for your specific fork. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Start off by removing the front wheel here. Next, I want to remove the brakes. So go ahead and remove these bolts here. There. So next, I'm going to go ahead and remove these top caps. They are different. This one here is an adjuster cap. This one is not. I'm going to use a, a 24 millimeter six point socket and go ahead and just unscrew these. And this whole, the whole stack's gonna come out like that. Okay, so just remember which side goes on which. So there, that one's out. And so that one is just a plain cap. Okay, so now I'm ready to remove the lowers. Holding the lowers on, there's a six millimeter bolt down in each tube here. Um, I actually did not get the full stack out of here. There's still a spring in there. I tried compressing the fork. It's not enough to push the, uh, the coil out there. That's fine. Um, what I'm gonna do is uh, I have an extra long hex socket, a six millimeter. Uh, this is five inches long there, and this is long enough to reach down through the spring and connect into the bolt down there. So I just need to unscrew this one and unscrew that down there and I should be able to get the, the uh, lowers off. So if I just reach down through the spring and I can feel it lock into that bolt down there. And I think I get that one loose. And then I want to get the one down on this side, get it firmly locked into place there and unscrew this one. And it feels like it's loose down there. Now let's go ahead and try the lowers. Ah, and they come off. And so, the, I got the lowers off. Next I want to go ahead and pull these little rubber rebounds off. There's like a little clip underneath them that holds them on. So what I'll do is uh, slide this little clip off like this. And then I go ahead and just slide these little rebounds off like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just slide these boots off. Okay, so next I'm gonna push these plungers up and out. So this one shouldn't be any difficulty because there's nothing up in there. So I just push this up and get, I'm gonna use a T uh, roll wrench here to push it up and out like that. And then this one's gonna be a little trickier because there's a, still a spring and then like, uh, like a, kind of like a seal or something up above there. So this one's a little stiffer. And so I can push it up that far and then the little thing kind of catches up here where the threads are. So what I'm do is maybe just kind of carefully knock it out. There's the spring. And then I should be able to just push the plunger the rest of the way out like that. So got all that. Well, I got the fork taken apart here, and so now I'm ready to start cleaning up all the parts. I'm just gonna be using like soap and water, dollar store degreaser, scrub brushes, and get all the old grease off and all the old dirt off and stuff, and then I can start getting ready to put it back together. Well, I got the parts all cleaned up. Like I said, I just used soap and water, scrub brush, uh, some degreaser. Uh, to clean the inside of the tubes, I just pushed like a bit of a paper towel down and then pushed it back out, the same with the uppers. And so now I'm ready to start putting it all back together again. Now when you're putting the fork back together, you want to use a grease that is made for suspension forks. I use Slick Oleum, also known as Slick Honey. This stuff, it works great. It's safe for the plastic and rubber parts inside the fork. It gives you good performance. If you want to use a grease that is not made for forks, you're on your own. Don't even bother asking me about it. I'm going to start off by sliding the boots on. Uh, the part here that has like the four little holes here, it's just a little bit wider. That's going to go down. So just slide them on into place. Like that. And now I'm going to go ahead and put a, a thin coating of the uh, fork grease here onto the uppers. 
Next, I want to install these little plungers or compression rods. And before I do, I want to go ahead and put some grease on it. Make sure you get some grease up around in here and on the shafts. Get some grease on there and the same th on the other one. Like that. And then just drop them into place. If the compression rods don't fall through on their own, go ahead and just have tap on the, uh, the forks and they should fall through. Next, I want to install these little rubber rebounds. Uh, there's no up or down on these. Either way is okay. But before I put them on, I want to go ahead and get some grease on them. And then slide it, uh, slide it up into place. Same thing with the other one. Get some grease on there and then slide it up into place. And then next I need to reinstall these little clips here. There's like little slots on here and these slide just into these little slots like that. And then go ahead and pull the rebounds down onto the little clips like that. So now I'm getting ready to uh, install the lowers. Before I install the lowers, I want to get some grease down in the tubes there. Uh, so I want to get a nice good glob of grease on my finger here and stick it down as far as I can and rub it around down inside there. Do that on both sides. And then I also want to get some uh, grease up here around in the reservoir of the seals there, just below the top of the seals there, on both sides. Now these do have a really neat feature here, these little micro loop ports. So if you have a grease gun with the right type of fork grease in there, you can go ahead and squirt grease in there uh, to fill up inside there, uh, but that's generally done for uh, maintenance without uh, removing the, the uh, lowers here. So before I slide the lowers on, I'm gonna go ahead and clean off any grease on the threading here on these compression rods. So now I can slide the lowers into place. You wanna make sure that the brake bosses here are facing forward. And then slide them up like that. So now I'm ready to actually attach the lowers to the uppers and that's done by uh, tightening that compression rod which is threaded and it threads into the lowers there. And so I'll be going down through the, the upper tube uh, to do that. Um, I don't need to reach down through that spring anymore so I can use just a regular six millimeter uh, hex socket. I still need to use the extension because I need to reach down there. So I'll just put this down through there and get it locked into that compression rod. I feel it locked in and I wanted to get a little bit of downward pressure and turn it by hand and I just want to hand tighten it. So that, that side's hands tightened and I want to do the other side. Just push down and hand tighten it. There. So now I need to tighten those down using a torque wrench. Uh, they need to be torqued down to 10 inch pounds, not foot pounds, 10 inch pounds, which is not very tight. And so I have a small beam torque wrench, which I prefer for a, a beam torque wrench over a clicker torque wrench for the really light torques. And so I'll go ahead and get this on here and then just very carefully tighten it to 10 inch pounds and there that's all I want to do be careful not to over tighten it or you'll strip those right out let's do the other side and then tighten this side here and 10 inch pounds on that side so I'm ready to put the fork stack stuff back in. Uh, I want to go ahead and uh, grease it up before I put it in. They had quite a bit of grease on there when I pulled them out. Uh, they, it was kind of a red grease. I'm not sure what brand of red, uh, what grease that was, but I'm sure it was like a fork type grease. But, so I want to get it nice and good coated on there. 
And then I'm going to drop this in with the little black cup facing up. And push it down in there. And then grease this up here. And then I want to get like a little bit of grease up here on the threads. And around down on here as well. And I'm going to go ahead and screw this down so that it goes in a little easier. Uh, so I'm turning this uh, counterclockwise. So turning down the pretension. Then I'll drop this in. And start screwing it in by hand. Then I'll use a 24 millimeter socket to go ahead and do it in. Make sure, be real careful that you don't, aren't cross threading it. And then just turn it down until it stops because it's only supposed to be about hand tightened. Okay, I have the other cap here. I'm going to just put a, a thin coating of the grease on the threads here. And, oh, I should have pointed out that the uh, stack goes in the non-drive side and then just the plain cap it goes on the drive side. It's the same size that you pulled them out of. Just tighten it down until it stops and don't tighten it any further. And then just wipe off any excess grease up here. Push the fork boots down against the uh, seal flange, like that. Reinstall the brakes. Reinstall the front wheel. Re-engage the front brake. And done, and they're moving nice and smoothly. Uh, this was actually pretty cool. These were the first Manitoba forks that I've overhauled, and they were interesting. They were a little bit different than the Rock Shock, Sun Tours, and RST, and some of the other forks that I've overhauled. I'd like to try some other flavors of these. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. Hopefully you found this video useful or interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my channel, click that subscribe button. Be sure to click the bell so you get notified when new videos come out. I'm over on Facebook, RJ the Bike Guy. Like that page, come over there and join me. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching.